So what we've done is that we've provided an entirely new view of how blood gets made, which is sort of a remarkable thing since we've, we thought we had a textbook view of blood development that was set from the 1960s onwards. And through a series of experiments where we've been able to more finely resolve uh, different kinds of blood cells from the stem cell on down. The textbook view is that uh, a blood stem cell uh, is multipotential. That is, it has the possibility of making all blood cell types. You can think of it like a prism. You have white light shining through the glass. Blood stem cells are like the white light. They have all the colors of the rainbow in them. And as they become more and more uh, specialized, the colors of the rainbow get broken off one at a time. In other words, uh, every time the cell gets more committed, uh, it loses uh, a color. And then at the bottom, you have all of the 10 colors that represent the different blood cells. If you summarize what we've done, what we can say is that everything begins with a stem cell, but those decisions of how a stem cell actually makes mature blood happen very quickly right out of the stem cell sort of compartment. They don't go through a slow gradual process. In the adult, it is this two-tier rapid development system. So the potential clinical utility will be that we will be able to understand far better a wide variety of uh, human blood disorders, uh, from anemias, that's where you don't make enough cells, to leukemias, where you make too many cells. Our new high resolution monitoring ability actually will allow us to go back and redefine disease states. It means every patient could, be get, could get their own personalized therapy. So I'm John Dick and I'm a senior scientist at the Princess Margaret Cancer Center.